stage to the Toastmaster of the meeting, Dmitry, Dmitry Kapitnikov. Welcome. Dear Mr. President, dear fellow members and guests, good evening. Uh, I'm, my name is Dmitry, as I was presented, and I'm the Toastmaster of today's meeting. I will host today's meeting. I will host the first part of today's meeting. It's an honor to be here after a long period of time. And to, uh, for the topic of today's meeting, I've chosen the subject or the topic of challenges. And I think that challenges is something we are all familiar with because almost every day we face different kind of challenges which we set by ourselves or which um, our life set for us. And I think that here is Toastmasters, it's also a place uh, for challenges. Because as some of our newcomers said, uh, we're here to improve some of our abilities. And what is challenge actually? Challenge according to the, to the definition of Cambridge Dictionary, one of the main definitions. Something that is difficult and that tests someone's ability or determination. And here in Toastmaster, we test different kinds of abilities, like uh, speaking in public, like our leadership skills, and of course, our English speaking skills. So actually, it's a place to set a lot of challenges for us. And our newcomers already set challenges for them. They came for the first time here on, uh, to the stage, uh, presented themselves, but I think that uh, a challenge which is a bit more difficult is not just talking to people here from the stage, but to make them laugh. And in Toastmaster we have a certain person who sets the day, uh, the role of joke master to Alexander Shcherbakov, who will share his joke with us. Thank you, Dmitry. What I know about creative people, usually they have a uh, bewildered look, they can think about something, they can prove their orientation uh, in an extent. I saw a lot of such people when I uh, studied in the Literature Institute. I studied there. We, we, we went to uh, study uh, and students uh, ran into uh, signposts. Uh, they, uh, uh, these signposts stood uh, poor uh, on the way, and the student, uh, uh, I would ask, uh, how is who guessed to put this uh, uh, signpost on the way uh, in, to the literature institute? One day, I uh, uh, went uh, uh, on uh, Tverskoy Boulevard. Uh, sorry, Tverskoy Boulevard. Uh, I uh, uh, didn't think about uh, old signposts because I know this uh, danger. Uh, I uh, know knew about it, but uh, on Tverskoy Boulevard, uh, I uh, went and thought about alien Greeks, about how they knocked their uh, shields uh, each other, they put each, uh, knocked and thrust each other through their shields, because their shields had uh, special uh, mortises. And uh, when, at, this moment, at this moment, when I thought about Greeks, uh, light, traffic light, ran into my head. And uh, uh, I don't think, uh, I don't, didn't pay, pay, pay attention to what was a signal at this moment, but some flash maybe I saw. And uh, it was my experience how I understood that I am creative man. <laughs> Thank you very much for the show. Uh, it's always great to hear. Uh, hear doing it. Thank you very much. And now, um, talking about challenges, living in Moscow, living in a huge megapolis, uh, I think we, uh, like every day, we challenge ourselves to get from point A to B in time. 
And time management is one of the abilities which we uh, develop uh, during our work or other activities. And here in Toastmasters, we're also training uh, time management as one of the abilities uh, because it's one of the parts of leadership track which we train here. And also we have a special person who actually checks our time and helps us with our time management. And I would like to mention that uh, this person showed himself like a real person for whom uh, like a traffic jam is not a problem because he uses a stand-up scooter as I noticed. <laughs> so uh, it is a person who can manage challenges. Uh, so please welcome our timer for today, Vladimir Dailink. Introduction. Dear fellow Toastmasters, uh, yes, one of the great challenges when for us when we speak publicly is to take time for ourselves uh, when we do this. However, for the sake of simplicity, for the sake of providing more resources to, to other challenges in our public speaking, uh, in Toastmasters we outsource this function to a dedicated person. So, for today meeting it will be me. I will use these signs to indicate how much time left for every speaker and every table topic uh, participator. The green light uh, signals that everything is okay. Uh, you reached your minimum recommended time. Yellow sign means that not so much time left, probably 30 seconds, and you might need, want to wrap up. And the red light means that you are out of time and uh, really need to finish your story as soon as possible. In the end, I will provide the report how everything went and uh, signal some of us who has some improvement left in time management. that to come to this stage and speak is a challenge already, but to come to the stage and speak clearly without any kinds of mistakes is a next level of public speaking. And today, and as always, we have a special person, a grammarian, who is checking all our mistakes, and also uh, this person will present a word of the day for today. So please welcome Irina Gaishinets, a grammarian for this event. My name is Irina, and today I will be a wordmaster and a grammarian. So, I will listen carefully to all of your speeches, and afterwards I will provide a quick report on your vocabulary and your uh, instructions. Uh, and now I think it's time for word of the day, and when I found out the topic of today's event, challenge, it immediately crossed my mind that one of the biggest challenges nowadays is staying present. Uh, personally, for me, it's difficult to maintain uh, my concentration even for several minutes. So, a word of the day is fudding. means an activity of being impolite in a social situation when you look at your phone instead of paying attention to the person you're with. Uh, and I challenge you to use this word in your speeches and I will count how many times each of you uses it and as I, as I will already mention, give you a report afterwards. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, excuse myself because I already uh, was popping today when I was um, uh, yeah, looking for the uh, definition of uh, the word challenge. And uh, actually, it's a really uh, it's a challenge for me not to use my phone, not to pop. And I, uh, to speak honestly, I'm a father. Uh, okay, so uh, let's uh, proceed. And now it's time uh, to uh, introduce another, another person who helps. Uh, us to avoid different kinds of unnecessary words or sounds and who also helps to make our speech clearer. So please, uh, I did.
My task is to know all unnecessary, inappropriate fill awards during all the meeting. And uh, at the end of the meeting, I will bring with my report. And uh, as a bonus, small advice for me. Uh, next time, before your speech, just think about uh, my advice. Um, instead of making some unnecessary words, just make a small pause. And I guarantee that your speech will sound more professional and more clear. <laughs> Thank you very much. And actually, for me, it's also a challenge not to use them. I'll try to do my best and hope with your help, I will, but I'll do it successfully. Okay, so now actually we've covered all our minor roles, right? And it's time to address to our main heroes uh, of every meeting, uh, the speakers who've accepted the challenge of preparing and presenting a speech and now they're ready to come to the stage and share some of their... is uh, not a newcomer, but he's making... Uh, he actually challenged himself to choose a new path, let's say because he started a new uh, educational program in Toastmaster system, which is called Pathways. So here today with the first project from the Pathways program, um, Ivan Sronagadic, right? Uh, with his speech, no one cares about how talented you are. Thank you. Yes, um, some of you might know me, some of you don't. For those who know me, we will reveal the secret of my long absence at the end of the speech. But those who know me, who can remember my awesome World Cup speech? Who watched the World Cup? Yeah, okay. Well, okay. Impressive. Well, a couple of newcomers did. We will come back to this at the end. I have another survey where I need more participation. If you had to choose between being able to work hard and being really talented, which one would you choose? Who would choose talent? From, from all of you, yeah, okay? And who would choose working hard? Okay, yeah? You should remember your answers because you will need it at the end. We will wrap up this at the end. Now, usually an icebreaker is supposed to do what? How does an icebreaker usually look like? The person is supposed to tell something about themselves and they're supposed to lose their fear of public speaking and then in the end they get a pat on the back and that's that. But no one actually really addresses why they come to Toastmasters. And this is what I want to change today. My path is called coaching and I am supposed to learn how to contribute to someone else's development and to develop strong public speaking skills. <coughs> I ask myself, if I want to do that for other people, first I need to learn how Toastmasters can contribute to my own development. And today I am going to give you, so this is the overall theme of my speech, the three reasons why I actually come to Toastmasters and why I took specifically this path first. And more importantly, I will also tell you the exact questions that you need to ask yourself whether it actually makes sense for you to even come to Toastmasters. Now, usually after my speeches, people come up to me and tell me, wow, that was such a great speech, you're really talented, I wish I could do the same, and so on and so forth. And actually, that didn't really start yesterday, because I can remember even in elementary school, I was already doing public speaking. And I remember an instance where we had this event in elementary school, and I was the anchor man in the school's gym hall, yeah? And I led an event of a couple of hundred pupils, actually. And there was yet another such event. It was a couple of years later, and I was again the anchor man for something, but actually the reason there why I took it is because there was a really cute girl, and I really wanted to work with her, so it wasn't really about public speaking at all. Why am I telling you this? Talent is really nothing if you don't put in the hard work. I have set myself the goal within two years to become a DTM. And the first 
step that I took towards this was to enter actually now two clubs. So I'm a member of this club and of the German uh, Toastmasters Club, the German speaking Toastmasters Club. Now, you should ask yourself, do you have talent for public speaking? But more importantly, do you max out your talent? And think about it, only two answers are the correct ones, and two are not correct. Think about which ones those are. Now, contributing, or actually transferring, to hard work, yeah? We need to max out our talents. Hard work was something that I didn't really put in, in the Toastmasters, and that was actually the reason for my absence. I told you, I'm going to tell you why I was absent, and it was because of the Godforsaken World Cup. There it is yet again, yeah? And probably all of you remember, having watched it or not, all of you remember Russia playing Spain, yeah? And I am going to be honest, I wasn't exactly cheering against Russia, but I wasn't for Russia either, because that meant yet another, you know, yet another huge party, yet another instance of where you don't really take things seriously and where you don't work hard. And this is the point of my second point, taking things seriously. And how does this fit into Toastmasters? I remember a conversation that I had with a couple of experienced members here of Toastmasters and we were talking about how Toastmasters is actually also not serious enough and how they are too lax and how they don't really impose the boundaries that the members would need to take action. You should ask yourself, are you too lax with your participation at Toastmasters? Does it make sense for you to come to Toastmasters if you don't take the opportunity to speak? Does it make sense for you to come to Toastmasters if you don't even contribute to table topics? Does it make sense for you to come to Toastmasters if you don't even want to take the R counter role or the timer role, which is, in my opinion, really easy? Yeah? Now, as they say, one man's trash is another man's treasure. So if you are too lax, it's good for me because that means I get more opportunities to develop my own skills and to contribute to someone else developing their skills. And this is the point, this is my last point, it is value. This is the, part, the whole point of the coaching program is to contribute value to someone else. It is the synergy of the first two points. Being able to combine talent and hard work and showing someone else how to do that. Now, how do you actually add value or how do you get value from Toastmasters? Toastmasters is actually great for getting value for three reasons. It has low barriers to entry, anyone can enter. It is really cheap, and as we said, the competition is really low. So, to recap, the three points that I made. Talent. Are you talented? And, more importantly, do you actually make use of your talent? Second, are you serious enough with why you're actually a Toastmasters? And three, do you actually soak up the value that Toastmasters gives you? Now, unfortunately, I ran out of time, so we will actually have to finish this whole little survey thing that I had prepared during the break, and this is going to stay the mystery of today's speech from my side. Thank you. Actually, even wasn't fogging during a speech. Uh, and uh, now it's time to proceed with our speakers. But before I do so, I would like to remind you that you have special uh, lists special uh, piece of paper, evaluation uh, sheets, which you can uh, give to the speaker who was on uh, the stage. Uh, so please fill it and give it during the course or after the meeting. Thank you. And also for the members of our club, we have also evaluation list to evaluate all the members who come to the stage. Uh, also don't forget to fill them and pass them after the meeting to whom? to the president probably, yeah? to the secretary, uh, to the to Margarita, yeah, right. And now we'll uh, continue with this topic is intriguing because this is called uh, drugalization. Please welcome to the stage Ivan Shulev. Thank you. So what can be better than the Ivan speech? Another Ivan speech? <laughs> 
So, uh, dear Toastmasters, you know, uh, despite the fact that I grew up in a family which is absolutely non-religious, uh, I never saw my father drunk or smoking. And uh, in general, the only drugs that were not forbidden in my family were coffee, sugar, and uh, love. Today, nowadays, I neither use uh, sugar nor coffee, so the only thing that I'm left with is love, so I love you very much. Thank you for being here. But uh, back to my topic, um, you know, by growing uh, in such an environment, I was absolutely sure that a drug-free world looks like a Mad Max movie. Does anyone know that movie? You know? Yeah. So uh, it's a post-apocalyptic world where uh, a lot of crazy, violent people driving their rusty cars and killing, robbing, uh, stealing, uh, listening to rap music. I mean, all these scenes in this world. Uh, and that was, that was my expectation when I the first time landed in the airport of Amsterdam, in Netherlands. And I was suspiciously looking to the people's eyes in order to detect some, you know, diluted pupils or some uh, uh, signs of using drugs. But the reality was even more uh, unexpected because what I saw was smiling people on bicycles, well-dressed, healthy, clean air, clean streets, beautiful buildings. And I was like, wait, 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 what? And my open-mindedness was challenged at that time. And uh, today, uh, after that, I, I made a small research uh, into this topic. And uh, today I'll share with you some of the most uh, widespread questions. The, the first question that I had uh, was, Aren't drugs uh, extremely dangerous for our health? Well, basically this is a, a widespread uh, thought that the drugs, uh, more, most of the illicit drugs are uh, most, more dangerous than the alcohol and tobacco. But let's, let's go to the numbers. Basically according to the um, medical, uh, American Medical Association of uh, Drugs, the annual uh, drug induced deaths in America for 2000, uh, year 2000 was 18,000 18, people. And if you compare it to the deaths, uh, alcohol in these deaths, we have 85,000. And we add here 435,000 from tobacco. From this number, we can also extract the number from uh, uh, overdose deaths and uh, some other deaths that are should not be actually uh, added here. Um, so, you know, many illicit drugs uh, only, only 60 years ago were used as medicine to treat some uh, mental illness and it, LSD actually was uh, successfully doing its job. Uh, so the question number two that arose in my head was uh, legalization uh, leads to more consumption. And uh, it is somehow intuitive that we think if drugs are prohibited, the consumption sinks. If the drugs are legalized, the consumption skyrocket. Sounds reasonable, right? No, actually no, because uh, <laughs> there is no scientific evidence that the uh, prohibition impacts consumption. Actually, there, is, there are two guys in the Stockholm University. Uh, their names are Leif Lenke and Borghi Olsen. Okay, say hi to them. Uh, and so they had a research and they concluded that there is no correlate, uh, they actually found the correlation between the youth unemployment and the drug use. So what does this mean? That um, bad expectations from the future, anxiety and fear, do lead into increasing in drug use. So it means that drugs are not the cause, but the uh, result of bad, um, of, of some depression in society and some problems. Um, for, for example, take a look to the Netherlands. Despite the fact that they, are, they have a really uh, soft regulation of drugs, they are amongst the lowest users of drugs in Europe. And the, in contrary, Sweden is the harshest fighter in this war on drugs. And yet they have the, same, uh, the very same um, uh, ratio of using drugs as Norway. And in Norway, uh, for you to know, they have even a system of um, drug using rooms where addicts are provided with uh, all necessary equipment. So that's science, that's not my fault. Uh, question number three. A uh, US enforcement agency and some friends of mine that have uh, no idea about the existence of this agency think that uh, if you consume, for example, uh, marijuana, 
you for sure will uh, end up trying some harder drugs in the search of some uh, higher, uh, of better high. But let's go to the science again. And the researchers from Independent Drug Policy Center in Santa Monica concluded that teenagers were using hard drugs were uh, independent on the fact that uh, they tried cannabis before or not. And the same result concluded the people who wrote the article in the public uh, American Journal for Public Health. Absolutely the same result. Um, I don't want to say that someone should take drugs. Absolutely not, because I had family members who were addicts and drugs uh, destroyed their body, their mind, and their life. Uh, but I do want to say that if we put aside and take away the, all these political and um, ideological speculations, we'll be left with, with raw numbers. And numbers are saying that the overall harm of this war on drugs is way much higher than the positive effect because we have uh, crime and violence on streets because of existing of the uh, uh, cartels. We have innocent people spending years in jail. We have uh, people that uh, die are dying in pain because they just have no access to the painkillers. Uh, economical disasters, also we have environmental harm. Uh, but we are complex creatures, we live in a complex world and uh, we have complex problems. Uh, legalization is not the silver bullet that will uh, solve this issue, so I think we should stop for looking for simple, uh, simple solutions. Uh, and uh, as a conclusion, for many of you, this idea might be uncomfortable and challengeable. Uh, but let's challenge ourselves but to see things in a different angle. So thank you very much. And actually, as please remember that I also went to Amsterdam uh, last year for six days. And during these six days, I didn't pop. Yeah, because it's a very, very beautiful city. And um, uh, yeah, and now it's time to wrap up with our speakers for today. It's time to us to the stage, uh, the last but not the least, as we always say, speaker for today, Alexandra Guleva, who will. called visual theater and thus I would like to ask you a question who of you is undoubtedly sure in your love to any form of modern theater well neither do I and then I would like to ask you if you are just interested or curious about something related to theater well, since I got into the right place. My story with visual theater started with uh, a, memor a conversation which I uh, memorize till today. I was talking to my friend, Lisa. Imagine, me, all inspired. Well, visual theater. And my friend, Lisa, well, I kind of thought all the theater is visual. You watch it by your eyes, don't you? <laughs> or are you sitting in the darkness? Well, the story began in good old times, when I was 17 years old, studying in a school focused on mathematics, physics, and other technical subjects. We had adorable teachers, and the most adorable feature of them all, was the habit of spontaneous theater imitations. Well, my dear friends, are you willing to go to Taganka Theater tonight? After eight lessons and an extra physics class? You see where the story is going, right? Uh, that was how I became a theater girl. And this is also how I saw a very special, peculiar performance. 
It was called Opus Number Seven, whatever it would have meant. This performance didn't use words almost at all. So far, it affected my 17-year emotions in a very vivid way. Imagine actors in long black coats splashing some paint into a plain white wall. Some figures crashing out this white wall. Grand pianos crashing into each other like cars. Glasses and shoes falling onto the floor. And the snowstorm. A snowstorm made of little pieces of Soviet Union papers. The snowstorm blizzarding into the audience. Well, it was it was an amazing experience. So far now, I understand it was a performance about tragedies of Soviet time, about Soviet persecution of Jews, about tragic fate of. Sh Well, the tragic fate of a composer. And, well. But the thing which amazed me most about it was the work of the art director. What he did is combining some people inside of him. He was an artist with all these paintings on the walls and so on. He was also a visionary with developing all his ideas and using them uh, in the form of images which are beautiful at every point of the performance. He was also a circus performer with all these puppets, for example a puppet of Mother Russia, and with fire rings, with animals and other tricks. After doing some reading, I realized it also appeals for many other theatres. And there are many other circus performers, artists and visionaries who are making this thing called nothing by visual theatre. A key step to understanding the visual theatre is accepting that you don't have to understand it actually, because it is free for interpretations and similar to a cookbook with a thousand of flavors which you could not have imagined all together and as a list of alarmingly strange spices it comes to be more simplistic and more imagination feeling than you have imagined before. Seeing some things related to visual theatre is some new interesting way of perceiving art and as there are many of them, it's worth to explore. I myself kind of a fan or a lover of theater, but I've never been to visual theater, so probably now it's time to go and see something like that. Thank you very much, it was interesting. And now, actually, it's uh, the end of the first part of our meeting, and we'll have a 10 minutes break right now. Uh, but before I have it, uh, I would like to challenge uh, you with two things. First one, uh, try not to pop during uh, the tea break and try to socialize and talk to each other and make some uh, new acquaintances. And the second is, uh, thing is, if you leave the room, please uh, try to be uh, uh, here in 10 minutes. Thank you very much. And one last thing, one last challenge to put 100 uh, rubles donation uh, here in this box. Thank you very much. Uh, I pause it for the first part.
the person who uh, gave me the idea of the topic for today's meeting uh, challenges and I would like to ask at this stage Victoria Mogic. Now it's time for me to take over the meeting and now we will have our table topic session. This session is actually devoted to the impromptu speeches and as Dimitri um, has already mentioned we all our goal is to be involved in this process of learning public speaking. And uh, my task for today is to challenge yourself and to encourage you to come up to the stage and improve your public speaking skills. And as I am a table topics uh, master, my task is to do and to make your speech for some on some uh, prompt or improvisational um, subject or question. And today I have prepared a special task for everyone. Everyone, you can see these cards. It's nice blue cards, and they are taken from the game, the rhetorical game, rhetoric, the public speaking game. And this game, what is especially interesting, interesting in this game, the game was developed by the well-known and very skill, skillful public uh, speakers and uh, members of the Toastmaster International, uh, John Timor and Flora Nook. They are public speaking coaches and. So these cards are actually some tasks for this game. Uh, let me show you some examples. What you can receive if you come up to the stage and get a card. For example, you can receive just random tasks. It can be very interesting and very unusual. For example, so you have this card, for example, and the task is a toast. Raise your glass and give a toast to the other players. So just imagine you are you take part in a meeting and a party and you need to make a toast, okay? So this, um, while performing this task, you need to maybe perform some actor's art or some public speaking, so few, few arts or few talents. So, uh, let me tell you some rules for the table topic session. The first one is, you can be a volunteer. So you are, uh, it's your choice to come up to the stage or not, but you, uh, I would like you to really try this chance and to come up and to speak publicly. Uh, the next point is, so we have our timer and each of you will um, should uh, speak for at least one minute, but not more than two minutes and 30 seconds, okay? So the best time is one minute and 30 or maximum two minutes. And the last point is, I would also like to encourage you to use the word of the day for today, okay? That's another, another um, additional task for you. So, and now my question to everyone is, are there any volunteers? Would you like to learn? Okay, come up. Thank you. What's the word of the day? Some stuff to write on the board. Is there any stuff? It was on the table, sorry. Hmm? Was on the table. On the table? Oh, yeah. uh, okay, technical problem. So, okay, no problem. Uh, may I use just one sheet, okay? And I will write down the names. And your name is Kirill. Kirill. Mm -hmm. so, okay, my name is Ike. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. So, let me make the cards so you can choose the most interesting from them. So, choose the card. Okay, read the task cloud. Task. Talk about what you did today as if you were conducting an orchestra. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Let's imagine yes. you're conducting an orchestra. Um, yes. Uh, you can start. I can start. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. That's an awful <laughs> task. Yeah, it's difficult. Uh, yes, it's, yeah, it's, it's a challenge. Just, it's a challenge, of course. Um, uh, I guess I'll read the task once again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about 
about uh, what you did today as if you were conducting an orchestra. I don't get it. So actually, your task is to describe your today, your, your day, what you did today, uh, in the way like you are, what is the word, conducting the orchestra, like it's your orchestra. Okay, I, and I, I speak it. and I'm conducting and these tasks are not connected. They are connected. No. <laughs> uh, so try to do it this way. Okay. It's a challenge. Um, I today I woke up and I was in a great mood, uh, as maybe you were today or you were, and uh, everything was fine yes. this morning. And uh, the morning is uh, quiet. And uh, uh, as day as day goes, as the day goes, the morning starts to come. Um, uh, louder and louder and louder and, <laughs> and uh, when everybody smokes in a uh, 12 o'clock it's almost um, scaring loud uh, I, I, should, I should think and everybody's farting and farting and farting and everybody loves farting so much they, they, they don't um, uh, they can't decide to whether to fuck or to smoke or to fuck or to, to loud or to laugh, to laugh. And um, uh, this was my first half of my day. <laughs> and uh, then uh, uh, now I'm in a coda, and uh, I think uh, this is most mm, thrilling part of the day. And uh, thank you for your laughing because uh, it's very helpful for me to end up with my day. It's very fine. Thank you. Thank you. The cars are waiting for you. Please come up. your autobiography. Why should people read it? Yes. Just imagine. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, announcement. I have published my autobiography and uh, you're also scary and I'm so not sure that you want to know something about me or about my small life but actually there was some important thing which happened to me at pages 259 and, <laughs> and at 800 and 56, <laughs> that's why you should be extremely interested in my autobiography. So far, I should tell you that if you are scared of elephants, please don't read the middle part of it, because it can scare you, really. Moreover, please consider that not reading my autobiography is going to affect all your life from today till your death. That's <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> um, okay. Great. Thank you. So now I'm mixing the cards for you. So take one. Okay. What's it? You are a dog or a cat. Describe <laughs> your master. <laughs> so, who would you choose? Cat or dog? Uh, 30 seconds, I think.
I'm a cat. Kitty. <laughs> a kitten. Yeah. My master is a uh, cold, mean, and horrible man. Um, and he, uh, we live in a post apocalyptic world <laughs> where there is Channing Tatum and uh, huge cars that come crashing into the desert. Um, and um, as a cat, I'm not a big fan of this as you can imagine, but uh, neither is he. Uh, he is a doctor, but uh, unfortunately he has no patience because they all die in the harsh post-apocalyptic post world. Uh, so we have no money, therefore he cannot feed me. So I must myself go around and rummage uh, through the bins uh, and through the dirt to try and find some food. Um, but alas, there is none because the humans uh, beat me to uh, the scraps. So I am dying and uh, I beg you, fellow people at Toastmasters, to kindly donate to catsinthedesert.com uh, you can sign a monthly membership and pay only uh, 1,500 rubles every month to our uh, very good cause for me, uh, Tom the Cat, and also my other allies that are also out in the post-apocalyptic world. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, here we go. And now, take a card for you. You're going to tell a famous fairy tale starting at the end and working backwards. That's challenging, right? Is it like is it like a real fairy tale and I'm just... Real or not real, it's not okay. real. Okay, I, can, I actually can't remember how you call it in English. Um, basically, this fairy tale ends with two, ch uh, two children and a dead mother. Doesn't sound very like a fairy tale, right? But it's actually true, yeah, because that's how all German fairy tales end with uh, dead women. And why was the mother actually dead? We don't really know why. But the father is the, the how can I say, the good person in this fairy tale. It was yet another woman in this fairy tale who also wasn't very nice. So this fairy tale is kind of misogynistic, right? And because she was a witch. And how did she end up? She was also dead. Yeah. So like all women in this fairy tale, they're all terrible, so they all die because of it. Maybe I don't know. It's somehow related. How did she die? A terrible, horrible, painful death where she burned alive in an oven, like one of those poor cats in Callum's post-apocalyptic world. Yeah. And even worse, that fairy tale contains murder because how did she die? She was murdered by who? Of course, by yet another woman, because all women come, they, they all conduct the, the bad things in this fairy tale. And who was this woman? This was actually one of the children from the dead mother. Now, maybe some of you are already onto it, which fairy tale we're talking about, because these children had very ulterior motives. It was hungry and it wanted to eat the house of this woman, because the house of this woman was actually made from cookies. Yeah, so it was really, that's the whole motive of the child. To kill a poor woman is to eat her house, so you know, either she ends up being a bum or she ends up being dead. And to bring the fairy tale to an end, why, did, why was the child actually so hungry? Because her own mother, she abandoned her. She left her in the forest also to die. So actually it's not a nice fairy tale at all, it's all about death and dead women and killing each other. But yeah, what's the fairy tale's name? Uh, Hansel and Gretel. Ah, Hansel and Gretel. It's, it's called yes. the same. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. By uh, Brothers. Three, grim, right? grim Brothers. Yeah. Okay. And it's very grim as well. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Last speaker on the stage. Yuri. Okay. And now Yuri, please card. Thank you. 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 Speak in rhyme. Oh, <laughs> I thought it wasn't mine. <laughs> <laughs> so you have already started? So take some time for preparation. 
I wish. I was, uh, I wore a bird. Because if I wore a bird, uh, I could get some word. I need a word. <laughs> that, yeah. was, that was the case. I hope it helps me see whom I would like to be and finally achieve the wonders and uh, beliefs. So if I were a bird, I fly into some world, <laughs> world? <laughs> and see your Toastmasters sit in Gorney Institute. <laughs> I think that was it. <laughs>
table topic session with all the challenges for our uh, participants. And now, without further ado, I would like to give the floor to our general evaluator for today, Mikhail Bakubny. Mr. Toastmaster, good evening, everybody. My name is Mikhail, and my role today is a general evaluator, which means that jointly with my team of the evaluators of this meeting, for the next 15 minutes or so, we will criticize what happened on the stage today, because by that way we believe, by providing the feedback to the participants, to the speaker of this meeting tonight, we will help them to get other perspective of their, about their skills, about their improvement areas, with an intention that the next time they will come here to the same place or to any other stage in the world, they will perform better. And I will start with evaluation since the beginning of the meeting. So when typically I do not actually provide feedback to the president of the executive team, because if I am too harsh, that maybe that would be the last meeting that I am invited. But today I would like to notice that we start exactly on time. And uh, in my view, that is a very uh, significant achievement because I was part of the executive committee before and I know that it's not an easy job actually to prepare a meeting to the extent to start it on time without any further delays. And this is despite the fact that I was supposed to bring the printed copy of the agendas and I arrived in last minute. So well done executive team and let's give them a round of applause please. <laughs> now next, after the president opening we had a Dmitry who was the Toastmaster of today. Uh, what can I say? Dmitry is uh, one of the most experienced people of our community, so that's why today we witnessed one of the best performances of the Toastmasters. And what I think made it a good one, number one, he started with the higher energy levels, uh, giving the meeting a good start. Number two, Dmitry's introduction was brief enough uh, to explain us the topic of the day, but he was not consuming the time of other speakers by being more facilitator and letting others to the stage rather than explaining the, uh, his own stories for minutes and minutes and minutes, which sometimes happens to the Toastmasters and the Toast in the club and other clubs as well. So what I may recommend, Dmitry, you for the next time, you've done good transitions and sometimes you have done transitions in a, in a way that you still part of my job like saying that was a good introduction, dear Mr. Gilmer, or something like that. Yeah, so it's, it's good to build on the story from the people and maybe let evaluation part to happen at the end of the video. So now, joke master, Alexander, thank you for the being here and being brave here. I know that it's not a, easy for you, and it, it has been a challenge. What I would recommend to you as a speaker on the stage, more eye contact. Yeah, so you have been uh, sharing with us quite a good content and if you be, would be together with the audience, with your eyes, then your joke will, uh, will have a more powerful degree. So let's see next time that you and I will make the eye contact first and then we will spread it around the audience. What else? Next I would like also to evaluate our table topic session which happened just now. Victoria. I think you've got, you've got the volunteers to come on the stage, which means that generally the table topic session has been a success. Because I have seen the meetings when a table topic master asking people and nobody really wants to get to the stage. And it has been fun. So quite unusual topics. You also explain us the rules of this game that originated from those masters. For me it was new information and I enjoyed learning it. What I would like maybe to say from my perspective, two things. So number one, you explain that besides the speaking, this game includes some other acting, which is probably good in the friend settings. However, I'm not sure that it is fully relevant to Toastmasters meeting, because here our purpose is to speak and with a less extent to act. Yeah, so the Spy for Kirill, it was a super challenge. We don't do that every meeting. <laughs> And second, because of the game, the, the tasks and assignment, in my opinion, have very different level of complexities. Okay, for some it was a relatively easy task to speak, and for some of them, like Yuri, for example, I imagine it was extremely difficult to find the rhythms. So that's why, because we are going to find the best person, I think it's very difficult to match the performance and complexity at the same time. 
So maybe for the talk clusters meeting, we could find the tasks which would be more or less consist consistent with each other. And now, with any further ado, I would like then to call my team members who will help me to evaluate the rest of the meeting. And I will start with the evaluation of the first speaker. And I would like to call to the stage speech of Ivan Nogati today. Guests, Ivan Chernovich. <laughs> almost there. Yeah. What? Almost there? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was uh, the first project of uh, your joint pathways journey, which is Icebreaker. And there are basically two goals of Icebreaker. First of all, is to start speaking in front of audience. That's that's good because you're an experienced you are an experienced speaker and you will look great on the stage so you you were relaxed and uh, nobody were fubbing and uh, everybody were, were engaged so it was good so the second goal of uh, the icebreaker is to identify what you can do good according to the, your goals and your goals is uh, to become a coach and help other other people and I hope so and uh, what you can do go good and uh, what so what is the gap what you can do better what you can learn from from during this journey so here are th two things that uh, were good you were asking questions and for coaching it's very good to ask questions and uh, the second thing you engage the audience so everybody who are engaged so those are two things that are very good for for a good coach and there are four areas I'd like you to pay attention to that uh, would make your speeches even better. Two things are from the basic uh, public speaking skills. First thing is uh, time management, because if you don't respect time, you are not a good speaker, you are not a good coach either. And the second thing is uh, the structure of the speech, because uh, the, your speech was quite messy. So, and, uh, you probably already realized that. So basically, by practicing more and uh, by structuring your speech, it, it, it can become much better. The, thing, the second uh, part is the coaching area, the things you can do better to become a better coach. Yeah. The first thing is uh, the building report. So when you're saying that you're not cheering for Russia, you're not cheering against Russia, you're not building a report. You need to attach yourself to the audience to, to show that you are on the same page for the audience and you are a part of, of, of the audience. That will make uh, the connection stronger. And the second thing is uh, being humble. So you should not say, but uh, everybody comes to me and say, Ivan, you were great, your speech was awesome. It's, it's not uh, a, a point of, of a good coach. You probably need to be more humble. I was an anchor man. No, it's not the place to tell about that. Uh, <laughs> at least not not at the time. It was a good start. So it, you you reached the minimum level of uh, requirements of this particular project, and uh, I hope you sign to the next project. I'm looking forward to it. My job as a general evaluator is uh, not to evaluate on top of the job which was done by the personal evaluator. But offer some suggestions to my team members like Yuri has done today. That was an example of the quite analytical evaluation which was done against the objective of the project, which was done very well. So what I may recommend you uh, to improve your evaluation, put into the context. Uh, so put it more specific because when you say that I'm sure you agree that your speech was messy, Maybe one does not agree, and if you put a little bit of context and examples, what happened and what were the consequences of that part of the speech, then maybe it will help him to understand better and change next time something more pragmatic. Anyway, we are moving to the next evaluator of today. And I Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. Dear Toastmasters, uh, guests, uh, dear Ivan. Thank you for the speech. That was interesting, informative speech. I learned something new for me as well. The purpose of the speech was research. 
to find out some interesting facts and share the facts with the audience. And definitely, I think you reached the point because you have interesting, uh, you look, you, you found interesting facts about the drugs. Uh, that was unusual facts, actually, because uh, that's not something which people know about normally, uh, including myself. And that was good. I think it's, 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 uh, uh, it's excellent. I really liked uh, how you feel at this stage. You were confident, relaxed. Your gestures was, uh, were very good. And uh, that's, that's, uh, 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 that's excellent. The area for improvement. Number one, I have three points for you, Ivan. Number one is eye contact. I saw that you covered this part of the audience, but the other part were not quite covered because I, I didn't look, I didn't see your eye at all, right? That's, uh, then uh, you were disturbed by some notes on the table. It's better either to um, either remove them or use uh, uh, use them uh, here because when you uh, move down your I, then you lose contact. Okay. Second point. Second point is visual aids. I think uh, when you try to write down something on the whiteboard, again you lose contact. I don't know whether it is 18k or 100 less than 101, 181. Those numbers were not quite informative. It's it's easier just to put some uh, uh, prepared, printed uh, a piece of paper or use a um, um, uh, uh, projector uh, to share the facts because uh, it's easier uh, rather than unstructurally put something on the, on the table. And number three is to, uh, to use better connection with audience because I know drugs is an interesting subject but whether it is relevant to audience? Did you ask people about it? Did you try? <laughs> so, uh, I mean, uh, to, to test uh, and uh, you know, establish better contact with audience by asking people, by um, establishing uh, connection. Those are the three points which I'd like to mention. Um, overall, I like your speech. Structure was good, and I'm looking forward to uh, uh, the next uh, uh, speech. Thank you. Evaluating the evaluations. Structure to evaluations, and Nikolai advertised three recommendations. He delivered three recommendations. The good example of the focused evaluation on something. Recommendations, Nikolai. Number one. That project has specific objectives. Uh, in the beginning, you said that you learned something. However, I was also eager to better understand what does it mean to deliver good research speech. And maybe there would be some other components of the speech that Ivan was supposed to deliver. Either he delivered it well or not so well. And I was looking to get your evaluation more specific to the project objectives. And you gave three points which are general to almost every speech. So maybe next time we can increase value of the evaluation by adding more, this, more, more specific points on that. Evaluator number three, I need a little bit of help. Now this is going to be Kalun Helms, who will be evaluating Alexander Gudeo. Hello. So Sasha, I have to say, uh, well done. Uh, I think you're a fantastic speaker and it's always exciting to hear your speeches. And I have to say that you uh, definitely passed this project with flying colors, absolutely. Uh, the project was about using words um, and language, and I think Sasha was amazing with this. Uh, for example, imagine me all inspired, and uh, she went on with the story. Um, you acted your friend, uh, and that, this was great. Uh, I like this phrase, the story began in good old times. Uh, you used this line, the tragic fate of a composer, which was really nice. Uh, and of course, uh, when you got to the, the climax of your speech, you described the scene, um, a 
brilliant visual scene of uh, paint and splashing and crashing and crashing like cars. So the language here was uh, absolutely excellent. I have to say I really enjoyed it. Uh, now, how can you improve? So what could be your next steps? And I know you like books, so uh, I would suggest that if you're not doing this already, I would suggest that you uh, begin doing this. Where is the chalk? It's <laughs> oh. <laughs> all well. No chalk. Sure. Okay. Um, so think of your speech like a plot line or a timeline. So you're taking the whole audience on a journey. So we should be following uh, that the whole way. And actually your speech was like this. You told us about your friend, then your teacher, and then the experience itself, which was great. But then I found your end to be a little too long. So you already had your pinnacle of the speech, and, and then you kept on going, and, and at that point I thought, okay, what, what are we really here for? What, what are you trying to do now? So I didn't really understand your goal as well, until you said it at the very end. You said, okay, and you should go to visual theatre. So actually what I thought you could have done is told us about the goal at the very beginning, so everybody knew what your speech was going to be about, and we knew what you wanted us to do. Take us on this wonderful uh, visual, visual journey, leading us up to the pinnacle of your speech. And then remind us of that goal, so tell us again, okay, and that's why I told you this story. And I thought that one more thing you could do, which would be uh, uh, take your speech to the next level, would be to add a call, uh, call to action at the end. So, okay, yeah, we're interested in visual theatre now, so what do we do? Where do we go? So, for example, you can tell us where to buy the tickets. Maybe you can name a website where we can get those, and then, uh, and then that's how you could end your speech. So again, fantastic, and I await to hear your next speech. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have seen an example of evaluation, which in my view has very good uh, practical value to the speaker, because Kalum spent material amount of time explaining what is his recommendation and what can be done differently by also visualizing the speech as a journey. And uh, if I were a speaker, I would find this very useful. What is your view, Sasha? She shares the same view. In terms of recommendation, I think I will share the same what I saw, said to Nikolai already. So this project has a specific objectives. It would be really good to give the specific feedback on how that objective was met and what made you think and yes or no in that case. <coughs> From my point of view, I would, like, I would like to break my rule once again. I say that I don't give recommendations to the speaker because this is a job of my team. And I would like to give one recommendation because I think it hasn't been in part of so in Toastmasters, so we have a, a bit of the protocols, how we deliver speeches. And when you finish the speeches, it do, it's not necessary to say thank you. Yeah, so that's a, you can just finish with your last point, and then you can address the person who is running the stage at the moment. For example, say, Mr. Toastmaster, and that would mark end your speech. In that case, if you try to practice, it would become more pro protocolized and maybe in some way more powerful for you as a public speaker because you already achieved your climax. Okay, so now we are getting to the second part of the evaluation session where I will be calling my team members who will be helping us where well, here in the reports what happened today. And I will start with Grammarian and I would like to invite to the stage Irina Gashinets. It's time for a quick report on your vocabulary and grammar structures usage. And I think I'll follow a standard procedure and start with uh, pronunciation. Uh, first, I'd like to mention, um, I would say, the most problematic uh, letters collocation for Russian speakers, probably. It's TH, which is, uh, which is used in a word theater, or such word as death. It's difficult for us, I know, to pronounce it correctly, but I would suggest that we pay extra attention to this colloquial. Uh, another thing I'd like to mention is a word rapport. Um, it's my fault, I don't remember who used it, but um, I think uh, it was pronounced as report. And in this word, um, we don't pronounce the last two letters. Uh, also, I 
I'd like to move to the grammar that was misused. Um, here I'd like to pay extra attention to uh, using singular verb forms or singular nouns. Uh, in such an example as the consumption skyrockets or something sinks, it's remembered to add as to the third form of the verb. Um, another example of misusing a preposition is an expression, take a look to something. Uh, it's better to use a preposition at, take a look at something. Um, then I would like to move to uh, misuse of uh, articles. And I think someone mentioned Netherlands. And it is such an interesting country which uh, must be used with an article of the, the Netherlands. Um, another expression that I, uh, I'd like to mention is mix the cards. I think Victoria used it while table talking session. And here I would suggest uh, that we use an expression shuffle the cards. Um, but uh, what was used, uh, what expressions were used uh, in an excellent way and I'd like to mention are one man's trash is another man's treasure, which is a nice idiom you can use in your speeches. Um, another interesting expression was uh, legalization is not a single word, which is not uh, trivial and interesting. Um, and also, I would like to mention uh, Alexander's speech because it was full of interesting words such as blizzarding and peculiar and many, many more. It was really uh, pleasant to listen to such uh, an extended vocabulary. And finally, uh, we used uh, the word of the day for uh, 11 times. And an absolute champion is Kirill. Because <laughs> 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 he's table talk um, with uh, conducting an orchestra. He used it six times. Um, so I, I'd like to say that it was exciting to be a grammarian, and it, it was my first time um, having this duty. Uh, thank you, and I hope it was helpful. with your role, especially for the first time, what in my view made it well done. You reported on the common mistakes of today, very good. You spotted the good use of the words, which is also well done. Not every grammarian is doing that by focusing on the critics. And since your word of the day has been so popular, 11 users, very good. And we'll continue with our evaluation section and uh, let's see Let's see and hear from the how, how counter how clean our language has been today. Adil Dashena. So all in all, everybody did great. Congratulations. Uh, I won't talk in general, as my colleague Irina Vashenitz only technically correctly did. Uh, I talk a little bit about every person. Let's start from Ivan Cernogacic. Uh, <laughs> nice! No, okay. Excellent. <laughs> Perfect speech. Just a couple of so and and you know. But what I can say, uh, all of these words uh, appear in very appropriate moments and it sounds very natural and I think even organic. So, no more no comments. Everything was well done. Congratulations. Uh, Ivan Shiliaev, a uh, couple of times you know, a couple of times you like, and uh, this is your favorite song. Pay, pay attention, practice, make pauses. Uh, Alexandra Guleva, uh, I think you know that your favorite word is well. Well, uh, next time, pay attention, 
practice in front of the mirror, okay? Make the uh, Mikhail, Dima, Victoria. Victoria. Ah, okay. uh, Anastasia. You will pass today's meeting with flying colors. Congratulations. And uh, next time, uh, control filler words with practice, 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 and use poses. That's it. Back to you, Mr. Well done, good report. Focused on the specific uh, filler sounds towards the specific people, praising people who did not use that. In my evaluation to, to your to your appearance of today, I would like to trace back a little bit into the beginning when you were here making an introduction of your role. And uh, what was done well, you give, gave us the recommendations how can we avoid using these filler sounds. However, I was also looking to learn a little bit more examples of what you are talking about when you say filler sounds. And that way it will help us to be more knowledgeable about this improvement opportunity. And the last but not the least report from my... Yeah, so we did exceptionally good today. Uh, while I was fubbing with my timer application, I counted only two people who were out of time. Uh, Adil was a little bit short in the beginning, again without detailed explanation about filler sounds. Uh, and the Ivan Chnogatic uh, was a little bit longer than expected for 40 seconds, but that's it. Everyone else did just a job. Arriving to the end of the general evaluation session, so in closing, I would like to say when I am an evaluator, I am fully following the concept which Ivan introduced to us, one man's trash is the other man's treasure, which means that the speaker is terribly bad, this is a treasure for evaluator because you have a lot to do. But I also would like to say after witnessing the meeting today that one man's treasure is also the other man's treasure because we can also learn from others doing the great stuff. And I believe today was an excellent, fantastic meeting. It was a pleasure to be your general evaluator of today. And with that flying colors, I would like them to hand over the stage to the president of the club, Nikolai Denisenko.